Hey everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We are in Friday of the 13th week in Ordinary Time and our text today is taken from Matthew chapter 9 verses 9 to 13. I've entitled today's teaching, Just Two Words for Matthew. So let's read the text first. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, straight away I want to say that we tend to judge. That's what we tend to do. We tend to look at others and judge. Jesus chose to love. Now, if you were a first century Jew and you were talking, uh, if you were, sorry, if you were taking a stroll like Jesus did in Capernaum, you would have recoiled on seeing the tax booth. You know, no self-respecting person would ever consciously walk up to a tax collector and then engage him in a conversation, much less ask him to be part of his clan. St. Matthew, the author of this gospel, tells us today of his own conversion story. He does this somewhere between the sixth and the, and the seventh miracle narratives that he has been penning down in chapter eight and nine of this gospel. Now, for someone who has been so methodical in arranging the gospel in five neatly explained discourses, this text of his conversion story almost seems like an interruption of sorts. What on earth possessed him to do so, we will never know. What we do know is how simply this conversion story panned out. For most of us, the call of our Lord, especially to the religious life, must take place in some dramatic form. You know, for your vocation story to ring true, it should have the appearance of cloak and dagger format. It must be shrouded in awe and wonder. Now, did Jesus appear to you like in some apparition? That would be the usual question you would get. The more sensational the calling, the more authentic would be our yes to the priesthood or religious life. But as the British would say, such poppycock. Because God really calls you on the telephone. He could, but it's most unlikely. It's not the network, it's not like the network in heaven is bad. The network in heaven is the best. It's just that this service provider chooses not to use this facility. You know, our Lord saw Matthew and simply said, follow me. Jesus had just two words for Matthew. And that was all that was needed. There was no vocation pitch, no vocation camp, no tour of the seminary, no meeting with the bishop, just two words, follow me. We live, my dear friends, in a world where social media invites us to follow others. We speak of following this superstar, that religious leader, this political party and that food channel. Today, the Lord invites us to follow him. He can't be just limited to an Instagram page, for he is so much bigger. He has a whole book, and by the way, it's called the Bible. He does not post images, but he left us an everlasting image of his love for us, him crucified on the cross. He has no reel that is stitched together with a perfect caption and well-curated song to accompany it simply because he is real. The Gospel of today, my dear friends, also draws our attention to the second group of religious people who had a problem with Jesus. Ironically, Jesus has no problem with the world, but the world seems to have a problem with him. 
You know, in the Gospel of Matthew, the growing opposition to Jesus' ministry is seen really in chapter 9. First the scribes, then in today's text it is the Pharisees, and tomorrow on Saturday, finally, it will be the disciples of John the Baptist. Now, what is it that is upsetting the Pharisees? You know, according to them, Jesus is sitting at the wrong table. They would have loved to have the Lord, the superstar that he was, working miracles and drawing people in the thousands to sit with them at their table. But he chose to sit at the table of those who could only be called the scum of the earth. Why would any self-respecting rabbi make such a terrible choice? You know, Jesus never came to win a popular vote. Popular votes do not get you crucified, but rather keep you in good standing with those whose voices you agree with, even when they go against the grain of your faith or belief. You don't have to look far. Look how we why for the popular vote within the Catholic Church. If only the Catholicity we profess was practiced the way the Lord intended it, we would have stopped every program in the church that is already saving the saved. Ironically, the ones who hinder the work the Lord commanded us to do are those who are saved. It is they who still determine how the church is run, who runs it and who is ministered to in God's name. I want to say this. Get off your high horse. Listen to our Lord for once and not to your ego that is boosted by Satan. You know, Jesus did not come to make the 50 in the church who attend daily mass happy. He congratulates you. He loves you. But his church was to be a church meant to go out to the peripheries, to the least, to the last and to the lost. He said, those who are well, and hopefully that should be us, we should be well, he said, have no need of a physician, that is him, Jesus. Think of it, how stupid you would look sitting in a doctor's waiting room only to be ushered in and then for you to tell the doctor, nothing is wrong with me, I just came for no reason. Jesus is emphatic. It is the sick, not those causing others to be sick in, of the church that he came for. And I know that today's teaching might sound hateful and hurtful. I could have picked my words and softened the blow, but then didn't our Lord or do the same? You know, remember that he called the religious establishment of his time a brood of vipers. And I think, how would that go down with a Sunday congregation? I think your bet is as good as in mine. I want to pray today. The Lord called Matthew and the Lord calls all of us. But we have to ask ourselves, are we also becoming a hindrance very often because we have made the church a cozy club where a few of us are comfortable and we don't want others to be welcome because they disturb our comfort zone. Let us pray today together, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come to you, Lord, with an open heart and an open mind. It is with this that you approach the scribes, the Pharisees, and even the disciples of your own cousin who opposed you. They opposed you, Lord, because they wanted you to follow their way of life. But you had a greater plan to take us to the Father. But so often we hinder that plan because we are comfortable where we are. We oppose change. We oppose newness and freshness that the Holy Spirit wants to bring. Lord God, we listen to your word today. You call Matthew to be your own. You didn't call him with many words, you just used two words. Follow me, you said, he, you said, and he did it. Matthew didn't need convincing. He didn't need a lecture. He didn't need proof. He just looked in your eyes and he saw that you called him. You're calling so many of us, Lord, not just to the religious 
life and to the priesthood but just to say yes to your will and so often we demand proof we demand explanations you just want us to follow you help me lord to discern your will to say yes to your will like matthew to simply get up from my table which i have got used to from my business which i've got used to from my work that brings me comfort and move into areas of discomfort of newness of change because there i will find you lord and bless all those who viewed this video today bless their families their friends and i pray lord for vocations for young men and women and even older men who wish to be married deacons to say yes to your will and to the whole church to say yes to that call of serving you and may almighty god bless you the father the son the holy spirit amen thank you for joining me i'll see you tomorrow tomorrow is the end of another week and we will continue with chapter 9 tomorrow uh, we will do the question about fasting and jesus um, literally getting into a spat with his own uh, cousins disciples so we we'll learn more about that tomorrow don't forget to like this video to share this uh, with others subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it god bless you i'll see you tomorrow at 9:00